Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Sami here. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto has a god sealed in him. Part 2, hope you'll enjoy this video. So before we start please subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's get into the video. 3 weeks later. Naruto was right. Flaring Kurama's chakra had been an idea filled with problems. Now when he walked down the street he not only got glasses, but he also noticed that almost every shinobi he passed, would subtly move their hand to the kunai holster. They must have thought he was a serious threat now. He had not been able to do any training. He was followed not only by Anbu, but also by random ninja who could feel intent on doing him harm. They never got too close before either dog or weasel intercepted them. The part of him was really sad that they had reacted this way. It wasn't unexpected, but still made him sad. He was only trying to save Hinata. He wouldn't take back his actions, but he still hated the consequences. He had not seen Hinata, and, as far as he could tell, she had not left the Hyuga compound. He didn't know, but all that was about to change. He was headed to the park hoping to see some of his friends. He seen Ino, Chaoji, and Shikamaru once since the incident. They asked him if he had felt that scary feeling that washed over the village, and if he knew what it was. He had lied, and said he didn't know or feel it. Their parents had been there, and could see the lie in his eyes, but said nothing. They had been told what happened that night, and they themselves didn't really know what to think. Council Chamber's day after kidnapping. The chamber was filled with both sides of the council in full attendance. They were shouting all manner of things back, and forth when the Hokage entered, took his seat, called for order, and silence. Okay now that I have your attention, what is the meaning of this meeting? He asked calmly. He wanted to see where this was going. He already had a good idea, but still wanted to hear it from them. The leader of the civilian side of the council stood, and addressed him. We are here to ask for the execution of the demon known as Naruto Uzumaki. The man spoke calmly like it was the obvious course of action after what occurred the previous night. Denied. And let me remind you that my law still applies. He said with a fair amount of color intent to get his point across. He figured they would beat around the bush a little bit, and not jump straight to execution. He could already feel a headache coming on while rubbing his temples. A second member of the civilian council stood up to protest. You can't be serious Hokage-sama. Last night the beast was testing its power. If what was felt was any indication, its strength is returning. It will destroy the village if we allow it to continue to regain its former strength. He tried to reason with the rest of the civilian side shouting their agreement with him. Silence. Naruto is not the beast he is the container that holds the beast. He is one of the greatest heroes this village has ever seen, and proved so again last night. Hiruzen shouted. He couldn't believe the ignorance of these people. For the first time one of the clan had spoke. How does using its chakra make him a hero? Asked a skeptical Tsum Inuzuka. Tsum had a fierce look to her. Slip pupils in her eyes, wild hair, Inuzuka fang tattoos on her face, and red eyeshadow. She didn't hate Naruto for being a, but he smelled like a fox, and the Inuzuka's dog-like instincts made them natural enemies. So rather than it being hateful towards the boy her clan simply avoided any interaction with him. The Hokage looked at Hiyashi asking if it was alright to tell them this story. Hiyashi gave a slight nod. Last night Hinata Hayuga was kidnapped by the ambassador from Kumu. He turned out to be one of their best friends who was sent on an undercover mission to kidnap an unbranded Hayuga female. This earned many gasps, and looked to Hiyashi who just gestured for the Hokage to continue. The kidnapper managed to slip past all of the Anbu, and the entire Hayuga clan. He was however found by Naruto. This statement sent a wave of confusion through the council. You mean to tell that a six-year-old managed to track down a man who looted both the Anbu, and Hayuga? How did he manage that? Tsuminizuka was not happy about this little bit of info. Most of the Anbu tracker force was made of Inuzuka, and Hayuga. She felt insulted, thinking that the Hokage had insinuated that they weren't as capable as a six-year-old. With a sigh Harrison began Naruto seems to have a highly developed sense of hearing, sight, and smell. The kidnapper passed close to his home, and when he didn't recognize the scent he decided to follow. He told me he recognized a second scent that he knew was a child, because he had smelled it on the playground before, once he found the kidnapper's trail. This carefully concocted lie was to protect Hinata from the clan elders who would never approve of her being friends with Naruto. He followed the trail until he caught up with the kidnapper, and told me he only saw a person dressed all in black carrying a sack. The release of chakra that was felt came after Naruto was stabbed in the process of trying to rescue Hinata. He must have unconsciously channeled it in order to heal his wound enough to not bleed out. He managed to survive long enough for help to arrive. Dog and Weasel were the first on the scene, and killed the Kumo ninja before tending to Naruto and Hinata. Only Hiyashi, Hirzen, Dog, and Weasel knew that was not how events played out, but had been ordered to tell that story if anyone asked. They were to never speak of the true events of that night before Naruto became a ninja. The meeting ended soon after this, with most of the civilians being extremely disappointed, which showed in the look on their faces. Back at the park. Naruto was just about to leave the park. 
Ino, Shikamaru, and Chaji had been taken home by their parents, and no one was there. He had been hoping to see Hinata when she came around the corner with her sister. It was the first time she had seen him since that night. He started to walk over to her when someone stepped in between them. What do you think you're doing? You stay away from Lady Hinata and Lady Hinabi. I wanted to ask Hinata-chan if she was okay. I haven't seen her since it happened. Said Naruto, confused on why this person would try to keep them apart. Didn't he know they were friends? All of the Hyuga knew Naruto had been there that night, but only one knew exactly what role he had played. Many of them wanted to blame him for her kidnapping, but Hiyashi put a stop to that immediately, saying Naruto was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time, and had nothing to do with her kidnapping. Hyugas do not associate with your kind demon. You will stay away from them if you know what is good for you. At this point Naruto was almost in tears. He had just wanted to see Hinata, and make sure she was okay. He wanted to make sure she wasn't mad at him, since he hadn't seen her in so long, and asked how Hitomi-sama was. He just barely managed to catch a glimpse of her, both her, and Hanabi had tears in their eyes. He could see this was not what they wanted, and turned to leave. He knew it had to be something the elders had planned. They must have appointed a guardian that hated him to keep him away from them while Hitomi was recovering. It was one of his worst days in a long time. Almost two years later. Naruto was excited. Tomorrow was the first day of the academy. He had been training hard, and was ready to show what he could do. Just as he was getting ready to go to bed Kurama spoke to him. Kit, we need to talk about tomorrow. Okay, what about tomorrow? You can't show your true strength. In fact you should probably barely pass. Naruto became very confused. Why would I do that? I will easily be the best one there. I am stronger than most genins already. I could probably graduate in one year. Naruto ranted. Kurama was trying to stay calm. He may have grown quite attached to the boy, but that didn't mean he didn't want to strangle him sometimes. I know how strong you are. But you are not strong enough to defend yourself from all threats. That damn civilian council would surely try to have you killed. They probably will try to have you killed even if you take the full 8 years to graduate. Take that time to become stronger than anyone they could send after you. Naruto laid his head down in thought. Kurama made a good point, and had never done anything that harmed him, unless it would make him stronger in the long run. Although practicing water walking in a hot spring had been pushing it. Okay I will hide my strength. But I am not going to get pounded into the ground either. You don't have to let yourself look totally weak, but I would recommend losing most matches unless it's to someone truly weak. Naruto only gave an internal nod before going to sleep. Next day. Naruto woke up excited. Today was his first day at the academy, and he would finally get to spend time with Hinata without being chased off. He got to see Hinata every now and then, but only a few times had she been with her mother, who was looking worse and worse, meaning that they were free to interact. But now she would not have a guard, and he would be able to see her and talk to her most of the day. Naruto ate his cereal in a rush wanting to get the day started, as soon as he could. He rushed out the door, and hesitated when he didn't hear, smell or feel anybody following him. He knew that his Anbu guards would no longer be there. They were getting short-staffed, so they could no longer afford to have anyone guard Naruto. It would have made him look untrusting of his own ninja to keep Anbu guards following Naruto when they were needed for village security. Not to mention it would look bad to the teachers if they saw Naruto being followed by Anbu. Naruto ran through the village ignoring the glares and looks of hatred. It was harder to ignore all the negative emotions he always felt from people around him, but he had learned to cope. Being able to feel the hatred, as well as see it, had been incredibly difficult to deal with. It didn't take him very long to reach the academy, and he saw a few of the older kids there already. Most were doing some kind of training or another, but all that came to a stop when he came through the gate. The three oldest classes knew exactly what he had inside him, and he could see the looks of hatred from them. It appeared the kids in the next four grades didn't care for him much either. Most of their parents had likely said to stay away from him, and that he was evil. He decided he would avoid the upperclassmen, and just go sit on the swing until the bell rang to go in. He had just sat down when three people began to approach him. He was looking the other direction, as they tried to silently approach him. They may, as well, have been playing drums, and shouting their intentions. He could easily hear their footsteps, and feel the anger coming off them. He quickly spoke to Kurama, how should I handle this? I know you said to not show my strength, but I will get pummeling if I hold back too much. Let's see how this plays out before we make any rash decisions. Naruto only gave Kurama an internal sigh before he spoke. What do you three want? Naruto asked when the group got about 10 feet from him. When Naruto asked this the three ninja in training stopped. They were sure they were undetected before he spoke. Not only that, but he knew how many were in the group, and he had not even turned towards them. What are you doing here, monster? The apparent leader sneered. Going to class the same as you. Naruto answered without looking back. He didn't know if his face gave away how he felt, but he knew his voice wouldn't. I don't think we can allow a monster like you in here. Said another. Yeah, looks like we will have to take care of you ourselves. Said the last. I don't want any trouble guys. 
please leave me alone. Naruto tried to remain calm, but on the inside he was starting to panic. How could he get out of this one when they would leave? Oh, there wouldn't be any trouble. For us at least. The leader said before charging Naruto and throwing a punch aimed at the back of his head. Naruto made a quick decision to take part of the hit and turn just enough so he would get hit but not have any real injury. Landing on the ground and pretending to be hurt while trying to come up with a plan to get out of this. As the second boy began his charge he was suddenly grabbed by the shirt collar and thrown to the side. Standing there was a weasel. How disgraceful. Fuichi has go after a lone boy with no training and half their age. Is this what has become of a once noble clan? Attacking children to make yourselves feel better. As Weasel spoke you could see the anger in their eyes. You know what he is, and you still defend him. You're full like the rest. He will kill us all. The third boy tried to reason, but Weasel wasn't having any of it. Attack him again, and there will be no place for weaklings like you in the ninja ranks. Weasel told them to usher them to class before turning to Naruto. Are you alright with Naruto-kun? Yeah. Thanks for the help. I didn't know how I was going to get out of that one without showing some of my strength. Indeed was the weasel's only response. He has seen some of Naruto's training and knew he could defend himself when need be. Naruto went to the classroom and was happy to see all his friends. There were some people he didn't recognize. The first being a fear looking boy named Kiba Inizuka. A boy with a high collar and sunglasses named Shino Abiram. The girl with pink hair that he thought was cool at first until he heard her shriek, Sasuke-kun. Both he and Kiba had to cover their ears for fear of going deaf. The banshee known as Sakura Haruno was of course talking about Sasuke Chiha. The youngest son of Fugaku Chiha. The Chiha clan head. He found out that most people in his class, including those he knew, were clan heirs. He spotted Hinata in the back and went to sit in the empty seat next to her. Hey Hinata-chan. I am so glad we are in the same class. Hinata was deep in thought and never even saw her friend come in. She had been worried about so many things. First her mother was still sick and only getting worse right after it seemed she would recover. Then her father had started to change. He was becoming cold and his training was harsh. On top of all that, she had barely been allowed to see Naruto. Her and Hanabi missed him. They would see him around town, but every time he would try to talk to them Ko, their guard, would chase him away calling him a demon. So, she was surprised when she heard him right next to her. She squealed and jumped at his voice. Naruto-kun, it's good to see you again. I miss you so much. I miss you too. At least now we get to see each other every day. How's your mom by the way? At this Sonata's mood took a downturn. She isn't doing well. Every time she starts to make a recovery she relapses and it gets worse. They don't know what it is. Just as she's had it since she had Hinabi. Hinata said with sadness in her voice. Just let me know if there's anything I can do for you Hinata. Anything. Naruto tried to reassure her. At this time a man in a vest came into the room. He had a scar across the bridge of his nose and his brown hair tied up. Good morning class my name is Iruka Yamino. You may call me Iruka sensei said Aruka greeting the class. After taking the role he decided to go over what they would be learning about the next 8 years. Naruto ignored basically everything he said in favor of thinking about his training outside of school and how much this was going to slow him down. Don't worry about it. Tonight, I'll teach you how to make it so you can go to school and train. Thanks Kurama. I don't know if I could get through this without killing myself. This sounds so boring. Day after Naruto's 9th birthday Naruto's apartment. Naruto had been in the academy for a little over a year. Just like last year he hadn't gone to school on his birthday. He never left his house on his birthday after his 6. He would always lock the door and just hide in his room, deciding not to expose himself to the hate anymore. He could take care of himself, sure, but he wasn't going to take the chance that some higher rank ninjas would come after him. He had been especially nervous about this one. This was his first birthday of truly being on his own since his 5th. No Anbu to protect him, and almost everybody knew where he lived. He was surprised though. The villagers didn't seem to take the chance to go after him. He could only think that it was because they remembered what would happen in the past if they tried. They would be arrested and spent a considerable time with the department. Something none of them ever wanted to repeat. After a visit they would blame the pain they experienced on him and become even more ardent in their hate for him. It was a cycle he no didn't wish to perpetuate. As he walked out of his apartment to head to the academy, he felt five chakra signatures close in on him. He could feel their emotions and he knew they were after him. He didn't know what they wanted though. This was a new emotion to him, and he didn't know how to describe it. The only thing he knew for sure is that they were all Achihas. What do you think about Karama? Should we run, fight, or talk? If this is what I think it is, we need to cooperate, or at least make it seem like we are cooperating. Activate your eyes, but hide them. Naruto did, as Karama told him using A, and started to walk to school. He only made it to the stairwell before he was forced to look directly into the Sharingan eyes of an Achiha. His eyes, being more powerful, saw through the right away, but acted like he did not. Come along, we have a village to take over. 
said as he led Naruto away. They soon arrived at the Ichiha compound. I have brought them, as asked. He is in my full control. Good. With that we can take over this village easily and kill the Hyugas once and for all. Said an unknown voice from behind Naruto. Attack and revival. Last time. Naruto did, as Kurama told him using A, and started to walk to school. He only made it to the stairwell before he was forced to look directly into the Shuringen eyes of an Ichiha. His eyes being more powerful he saw through the right away, but acted like he did not. Come along, we have a village to take over. Said, as he led Naruto away. They soon arrived at the Ichiha compound. I have brought them, as asked. He is in my full control. Good. With that we can take over this village easily, and kill the Hyugas once, and for all. Said an unknown voice from behind Naruto. The Chiha compound noon. The Chiha compound was a flurry of activity. Almost the entire Chiha police force was currently in the compound moving supplies and barricading houses. Only a skeleton crew that was necessary to keep up appearances was patrolling the village. Most of this was being done in almost total silence. The ninja Chiha were trying to protect the civilians and young members of their clan. What were they protecting from you asking? Tonight, they were planning a coup d'etat. They had been led to believe that they were being denied their right to rule. Who was old, and still hadn't picked a successor. They believed that it should be one of them, but he wouldn't budge. He stuck to his belief that none of them had the will of fire required for the job. The only one that he believed did was still too young to handle the job. So here they were preparing for war. They had told the civilian and children that they were doing an emergency preparedness drill, and that it would last until morning, and that is why the only one allowed to leave the compound today was Sasuke. This being because to not have him go would arouse suspicions. Most other Achihas would be in their district anyway, since only a few besides the police worked outside the district. Naruto was currently standing in the room with the clan's council. He had been ordered not to leave Fugaku's sight until given other orders. Fugaku wanted his weapon where he could see it at all times, just in case someone decided to back out, and they would not be able to take them with them. We will start with a distraction near the gates to draw the on-duty Anbu, and flank them when they arrive. I will take them, and unleash it on the Hayuga before they can realize what's happening, and respond. That should draw the most of his loyal Anbu. At that point myself, Itachi and Shisui should be enough to take down the old monkey. Well we do that they should have killed all the Hayuga, minus the two heiresses who you, he says pointing at, will secure, and bring back here. Make sure some of their blood is found to make it look like they are dead. We will keep them alive to see if it is possible to merge the Byakugan with the Shuringen. After taking care of the Hayuga we turn him toward the Anbu. Any questions? Ask Fugaku after going over the plan one last time. What do we do when the other clans get involved? Jon and Ichiha asked. If all goes according to plan most of the clan ninja are either out of the village on missions, or should be too slow to figure out what is happening in time to respond. We need all of this to happen within 30 minutes to have the best possible chance of success. Danzo, as his route will be staying out of this. He also wishes to see strong leadership restored. Sir no one has seen Shisui for two days, and Itachi is currently performing his Anbu duties. Another Ichiha informed Fugaku. Find Shisui, and don't worry about Itachi, he will be here just before we launch the plan. Fugaku said confident that Itachi would be loyal to his clan. Naruto had been listening to the whole thing with a growing sense of both dread and anger. He couldn't believe that Itachi would betray him. Not after every Itachi had done for him. He had figured out Itachi's identity long ago. It took everything he had not to betray the emotions he was feeling on his face. He was supposed to be in. Then there was Sasuke. He didn't like him much because he seemed to think he was better than everyone, but he still didn't think his family would do something like this. Sure, the Chiha had mistreated him, but they were never anything other than condescendingly polite to most of the villagers. We launch tonight at dusk. Fugaku said closing the meeting so they could get back to work. Hokage's off the same time. While the Chiha were making preparations, so was the. He was currently in a meeting with the advisors minus Danzo and Itachi on the situation. The attack will start tonight at dusk. Itachi informed the rest. Will it come to head soon? What can you tell me of their plans? Itachi told them the general attack plan, and then he dropped a bombshell that made the scene red. They kidnapped Naruto Khan this morning after he locked his apartment door. He never showed up at the academy. I couldn't stop them without giving myself away. He was put in, and led to the Ichiha compound. The plan to use his memories of what they will make him do to break him then Danzo, has a Yamanaka who will perform their mind destruction to make him nothing more than a mindless weapon. Itachi continued giving a full rundown of the plan. What else can we do? They must be eliminated. Everyone that is willingly taking part in this attempted coup. The order. This was one of the hardest orders he would have to give. But who could carry out an order like that? The Uchiha clan isn't known as one of the elites for nothing. Asked Humur. They didn't really have any ninja that could pull off a mission like that without being caught. Not to mention that whoever does this will have to be labeled a criminal to preserve our reputation with the other major villages. 
It would show weakness if a clan rose up against its cage because they believed the leadership was weak. Kahiru pointed out. I will do it, said Itachi getting white-eyed looks from the other three. Itachi, I can't ask you to do this. It's your family. It's one thing that you know it will be an order given to someone, but I can't order you to kill your own family. Reason Hiruzen. He had done things he was not proud of, but this would take the cake if he made one of his own ninjas kill his own clan. I was not asking Hokage-sama. This is the only way to preserve the honor of my clan going forward. It has to be me. If they are taken down by the strongest of them, it will look better for everyone than if some faceless assassin does. They plan to attack tonight. I must go and prepare. With that Itachi left, leaving Hiruzen with the others to wait for the inevitable storm that was to come. Ichiha compound two hours before attack. Yugaku-sama. Shouted in Ichiha. Coming into the room where they were making final preparations. He was pale and out of breath, and that caught the other attention if his shouting hadn't. What is it? Asked Fugaku, hoping it was only a minor issue. He still had not heard from Itachi, and was starting to worry about him. We found Shisui's body. His eyes are gone. He responded with no small amount of worry in his voice. Damn it. What of Itachi? I still haven't heard from him. No word yet, but he may still be attending his Anbu duties. He would stay to complete anything asked of him so as not to arouse suspicions. Responded another. Very well begin to mobilize, and get in position. I want the squad at the gate in one hour, the rest with me we move out in 90 minutes. He and they all responded. Forced outside Ichiha compound. Itachi had just finished off the last of the squad that was supposed to be headed to the gate. And started making his way to the compound. This was quickly becoming the hardest thing he had ever done. He knew he would hate himself tomorrow, but he could not let them kill so many innocent people, and would never be able to live with himself, if he allowed all his father's plans to come to fruition. Flashback. Fugaku had just explained his invasion plan to Itachi, and the rest of the Ichiha council, and was taking questions. The first one was. Why do you plan to keep the girls alive when killing them would be the end of all Hyugas? Asked an elder. He kept his voice, as neutral, as possible, but one could still hear annoyance in his tone. I know this may seem strange, but let me fully explain without interruption, and it will become more clear. The Byakugan surpasses the Sharingan in only three things. Range of sight, range of vision, and ability to see through objects correctly. Hi. What would happen if we could incorporate even one of those into the Sharingan? I have no guarantee that it could work, but they are the only unbranded females, the only unbranded children that we could easily control. If it can be done, it can be done, but if it can it will make it impossible to hide any technique from us ever again. So you plan to use them as breeding experiments? Asked another elder. Hi. That is a dangerous game you are playing, father, said Itachi. That sounds like something Rachimaru would do. It is a necessary evil. They will be kept in so as not to suffer needlessly. Was Yugaku's only response. Then flashback. Itachi came out of reminiscing just in time, as he had arrived at the compound. He could see the main force gathering just outside what had become headquarters. There were only five stragglers running here, and they're finishing last minute items. The main force was a good 60 strong. He decided to pick off the stragglers, and set some traps to try, and whittle the numbers down. Silently creeping up behind the first he stabs his blade through the ninja's heart while covering his mouth, before dragging his body behind a building out of sight. He repeats this on the other four, after which he slowly makes his way around to the main gathering setting up traps. Kunai launches on top of the surrounding buildings to catch anyone that tries to gain the height advantage, and explosive tags with trip wires at all doors, and ground exits. Getting into position he takes two kunai with high-powered explosive tags, and throws them into the back of the crowd. Boom. At least ten ninja lay in pieces, their bones becoming shrapnel causing injury to the next row of ninja. Panic and confusion set in. The smoke was too thick to see through, and that's when Itachi moved in like a wraith. Cutting down his family one by one. He got cut a few times from some that had managed to defend themselves if only for a short time. About thirty escaped including his father who was currently the one controlling Naruto. When he could sense no more life in the building Itachi slowly made his way outside. The last 30 Ichiha ninjas were waiting for him. When Itachi emerged to face the remainder of his clan their looks of shock and betrayal nearly stopped him in his tracks. The only thing that kept him going was seeing Naruto staring at him with a mindless glaze in his eyes. The Ichihas that had made it outside had no idea what was going on. They only knew that they were under attack. When Itachi emerged from the double door of the building they were speechless. It had been one of their own that had attacked them. Not just anyone either, but the future clan head. What is the meaning of this Itachi? Have you gone mad? Screamed Fugaku. His face held a look of pure rage. His own son had betrayed him. Father, you cannot win this fight. You would succeed only in weakening Kanoha and shaming our clan. I cannot allow you to harm so many innocent people because of your imagined slights. Having heard enough, Fugaku ordered them to attack. Itachi used their rush to his advantage and manually set off the kunai launchers. 
With the ninja distracted he cut their number by a further 20. When the dust cleared Itachi found himself surrounded by the remaining 10 Ichihas and Naruto. Release Naruto and send him away. We don't want him to remember this and let our clan be shamed. Itachi tried to command, but with his exhaustion and injury, his voice came out broken and panting. I have a better idea. Weapon attack and block no incoming strikes. Dugaku commanded. High was Naruto's emotionless response as he began forward pulling a kunai from the pouch he had been given. As he approached Itachi he got his attention by looking him straight in the eyes and winking. Itachi saw Naruto start forward and pull his kunai. He was trying to think how to break his control while sparring with him with the knowledge of what had been planned for him. When he looked in Naruto's eye again he noticed that they were not dull anymore they were fully aware, and then he winked. When he winked Itachi realized that they never truly had control of Naruto. Just as Naruto gets close to Itachi the other Ichihas start going through hand signs for various fires. Seeing this Itachi starts his own hand seals hoping to finish first and get him and Naruto away. Before the Ichihas can finish 10 golden shoots out of Naruto's back, surprising even him. They bind the remaining Ichihas, stopping them from performing their jutsus. Itachi quickly took advantage of the situation. Killing all but his father before Naruto could unbind them. Naruto-kun I'm sorry this had to happen. Itachi starts but is interrupted by Naruto. It's not your fault. I heard everything. I know you tried to stop them and they didn't listen. I need you to promise me something, Naruto. What is it? He asks. You can't tell anyone what happened here tonight. I promise I will never speak of it. I'm sorry to put you through this. But you must leave now. Sasuke is coming, and I need him to see me finish this. With that last farewell Naruto returned home. He wouldn't show up to the academy the next few days. Trying to come to grips with everything he had seen. He didn't know how he would be able to look at Sasuke again. One year later. It had been a long year. Kurama was putting Naruto the ringer, as far as training went, and he had started to absorb his parents' knowledge on Tajutsu and. Knowing the shadow clone made getting the forms down and practicing easier. Kurama had taught it to him the second day of school, so Naruto could attend class and have his clones study and work on chakra control. He would make an ever-increasing number of clones as his chakra grew and had them do nothing but chakra control exercises. His parents' knowledge on chakra control exercises had been fully absorbed, so he now had much to work through, but it was slow going because his chakra kept growing. During his parents' visit a few days ago they told him how to use the resurrection seal on another person, and even how if he used three at the same time, it may do something to reverse the effects of aging. Naruto was unsure how that would be helpful, but trusted them. Naruto had taken a week off school after the Ichiha incident. He had told them what had happened, and was almost forced to reveal his eyes, when Sirotobi asked how he could resist such a strong Shuringen. Flashback. Naruto had just finished his story on what happened at the Ichiha compound, and was waiting for the Hokage's jaw to come off the floor, and ask him some question that he knew had to be coming. How? How what? How did you resist the Shuringen so easily? Sirotobi finally articulated. Naruto was sweating until Kurama reminded him about the censor. Well I guess I should tell you a little more about the seal I have. Besides the fact that me, and they are on good terms to he can pulse my chakra for me if need be. My seal has a sensor ray on it that can either pulse my chakra, or if that doesn't absorb the foreign chakra, then use the Kyubis to destroy it. All I had to do was act the part. Sir Toby was impressed. He had known this was not the evil entity that it was made out to be. But he never expected Minato to put something like that in the seal, but he was glad he had. How are you taking everything? Ask Harrison about Naruto's mental health. Okay I guess. Do you think I could stay home for a few days to get myself tighter, so that I don't seem like something is wrong? Just say I was sick or something. Yes I believe that would be a good idea. He replied. Thanks Gigi. Naruto said leaving the office after getting a signed excuse from the Hokage himself. And flashback. As Naruto was making his way home after his training session, he began to get an uneasy feeling in his stomach. It only seemed to get worse the closer he got to his building. When he climbed to the top floor he instantly knew something was wrong. Everybody had moved out on the top floor leaving only him. But he could smell the fresh scent of someone else. He could tell from both the smell and emotion, sensing that someone was in his apartment. They were nervous, but had no plans of hurting him. He recognized the smell, but couldn't quite put a name and face to it. With all his observations complete he decided to go in and see what they wanted. He unlocked his door and opened it. He didn't see anyone, but he knew they were there. What do you want? I know you're here so don't try to hide. He called in an even voice as he closed the door. From around the corner in his kitchen a voice he recognized right away called back. I apologize for the intrusion of Uzumaki-san. I did not know if you would give me a chance to speak first or attack me for trespassing. The voice replied. To whom do I owe the honor Hayuga-sama? Naruto asked the now identified Hiyashi Hayuga. Do you remember what you told me in the Hokage's office just after you saved my daughter? Hiyashi asked. 
Naruto could hear the emotion in his voice. It was almost like he was begging him to understand his message. It took Naruto a few minutes, but he finally remembered the whole thing with help from Kurama. Has it become that desperate? Naruto asked just as carefully as he asked she had. Only hours are left. Hiashi's simple statement was enough to bring Naruto's thoughts to a grinding halt. He was his last hope. Hinata and Hanabi might lose their mother if he can't help. They were some of his best friends even though he rarely saw them. He hated to see either of them in pain. He saw only one option. Where? With this single word Hiashi seemed to relax. Meet me here in 5 hours. Hiashi said as he handed Naruto a piece of paper and turned to leave. Some conditions, Naruto said, stopping Hiashi in his tracks. He did not turn, but Naruto could tell he would say yes no matter what, you tell no one who saved her or how it was done. I will be able to tell you exactly what is wrong with her. You don't question how I know or my source. Agreed. Agreed, and with that he actually left. Naruto quickly looked over the directions, then went to take a shower. He didn't want to be dirty for something like this. After this he sent a clone to the Hokage with a note and directions to the secret room in the hospital. Five hours later hospital room. Hiashi was getting nervous, it was nearly the appointed time, and his wife didn't have long. She would last until morning at best. He had moved her in secret to a private room that was only supposed to be used by the Hokage, so that no one would come looking for them. When the door handle turned, his breathing hitch Naruto was going to come in the windows to avoid detection. He was completely surprised when he walked in. He started to sweat thinking something happened. Relax Hiashi. Naruto asked me to come, and informed me of everything you spoke of, although I do not know why he asked me to come. Hiruzen tried to reassure the worried man. A few minutes later, exactly five hours from when he had left, came Naruto through the window. Seeing everybody there, Naruto spoke first. Giji I need you to seal the room so no one can sense or see the chakra, light, or sound in this room. When said that both he and Hiashi instantly knew why he wanted them there. He was the only one Naruto trusted who he knew was good enough with seals to do something like that. I am impressed by Naruto-kun. That was a very good idea calling me here for that. Sirotobi said as he erected the barrier. Once it was up Naruto approached the bed Hitomi was laying on and began to look over her sleeping form. While looking her over he began to sniff. This action confused the other two men gravely. May I ask what you are doing, Uzumaki-san? Hiashi was nervous, but Naruto's actions only confused him. Simple, I am checking to see if it's a disease, a poison, or an autoimmune condition. Naruto responded. Hiashi was going to ask how he would know that, but remembered the conditions he had agreed to. While he was thinking of a way to figure it out by asking directly, Naruto's rambling caught him off guard. Definitely not an autoimmune. Some signs of disease, but that doesn't appear to be the main problem. He mumbled then took a really strong sniff near her IV site before jerking his head away and glaring at the bag of medicine going in. Poison. No question. He said reaching for the bag. At this point Hiashi was in shock along with the Hokage. They had never seen that method of diagnosis. All he did was sniff her, and now he was saying poison. As they were mulling this over Naruto had disconnected the medicine bag and sniffed it before putting a few drops on his tongue. Chakra metal. With these two simple words he actually felt his world collapsing. Someone had been trying to kill him and he had not been able to see it. Someone has been trying to poison her with chakra metal, that's why healing doesn't work. He then did something that confused and almost enraged Hiashi, who had to be held back by the. He removed his shirt before crawling into the bed next to Hitomi. He opened her gown just enough to place his hand in the center of her chest, and another on the side of his stomach. Hiashi stopped struggling when a bright light started glowing under the hand on his stomach. After a few seconds, his other hand on Hitomi's chest started to glow, as well. Resurrection Seal Transfer Naruto spoke in a somewhat strained voice. After he spoke a blinding light showed through the whole room. It took almost a full minute to dim again, and for Hiashi, and then to regain their vision. When they could see again Naruto was standing next to the bed with his shirt on, and Hitomi was again fully covered. He was looking a little tired, but what really got their attention was Hitomi. She was sitting up, and looking at her hands flexing them. What happened? She asked. Hiashi wasn't able to answer. He could only go to her, and hold her with tears in his eyes. He wasn't going to lose his wife. You're okay. Oh, Kami he really did it was the only thing Hiashi was able to say. Repeating it over and over. He cleared his throat and decided to speak, well I am very happy for you Hiashi-san, we have another important matter to settle. Who did this in the first place? What is going on here? How am I better? Hitomi demanded as she became more confused as she spoke. Well you see him, the Hokage said, pointing to the spot Naruto had been and seeing no one. He then looked around the whole room and noticed that he was gone. It seems he was cut off by the clan head, we can't tell you who healed you. Only what he said. First you didn't have an unknown disease or lingering weakness from Hanabi. You are being poisoned by chakra metal. I don't know who is responsible for this, but I will find them. 
Until I do though we are going to have to pretend that you are dead. And I am afraid that you won't be able to say goodbye to the girls, in case they try to go after them to get to you again. After this short explanation Hitomi started to cry. She couldn't believe someone from her own family had tried to poison her, and now she would be able to see her daughters or say goodbye without risking both hers and their safety. What are you going to say? Without my body, they won't believe you. She managed to get out through the tears. She knew the sooner that they made it through this the sooner she would be able to get back to her daughters. I have a solution to that. There is an old prohibition called the blood clone. It will create a biologic clone that will last about two weeks after it dies, before reverting back to the blood it was made out of. It takes a little over a pint of blood. Now normally we would ask that of someone who has just recovered from what you have but, considering I know a little about them that saved you, you are probably feeling, as strong, as you ever have. He looked at the woman getting a nod, as confirmation. It is settled then I will give you an hour to make arrangements while I set up what is needed for the. Unnoticed by the three a small rock in the corner disappeared in a puff of smoke. Naruto's apartment. Naruto had just arrived home after healing Hitomi Hayuga when his shadow clone dispelled. He had left it to make sure Hitomi would not know it was him. He trusted her, but did not want her feeling like she owed him. He had left a clone to see if Yashi would hold up his end of the deal. When he stopped the old man from blabbing, Naruto decided that he could officially trust Yashi. It felt nice to know that there was someone else he could trust. He felt bad for Hinata and Hanabi, but knew that they would understand in the end, and be happy to have their mother back after the culprits had been flushed out. Taking off his shoes and jacket he decided to just go straight to bed. The seal transfer had taken a lot out of him. It was the first time he had used it on someone else, and it had taken a great deal of concentration to work right. He knew it would be hard, but decided he needed to find a way to practice it, because he couldn't afford to be this tired after using it once. What if he needed to use it on numerous people in quick succession? He couldn't afford to be this wiped out after just one use. He now had one more thing to add to his long list of training items he had to complete. He would have to start in the morning. Six months later. Naruto had been unable to attend Hitomi's funeral. The elders had barred his entry when he had tried. Hiashi was going to stand up for him, but Naruto had stopped him. It would not do to have something like standing up for the demon cause as seen on what was already a hard day for Hinata and Hanabi. He knew the truth, but he still wanted to be there to help them through it, because to them it was real. The blood clone, and everything had gone off without a hitch with no one the wiser. It was a week before Naruto saw Hinata in class and, to the surprise of many, the first thing the shy girl did was to throw her arms around Naruto and cry on his shoulder. He never said anything, just held her for a few minutes until she calmed down just before class started. It took about a month before she started to get back to normal, but she seemed to retreat into herself and started to stutter again. The only person she would really talk to at first was Naruto. Hanabi had entered the academy this year as well, and Naruto managed to talk to her a few times to comfort her. Hanabi instead of becoming shy like her sister started to become cold like the Hayuga elders seemed to be. Naruto decided he would have to look into this when he got the chance. Now was his chance. We find him slinking across rooftops headed towards the Hayuga clan compound. He had heard Hanabi and Hinata's escort say they had a clan-wide meeting this evening, and that would provide the best chance to sneak in. Arriving at a building across the street overlooking the compound, he saw all the Hayugas making their way towards a large meeting hall near the rear of the compound. When the last of them had entered, he made his move. Dumping the wall and landing in a tree using all his senses to detect if someone was nearby. He decided this would be a great time to try out another feature of his seal. Fully activating the chakra masking seal and camouflage seal he could feel his chakra start to drain quickly. He only had a few minutes before he was forced to release the seals. Quickly and quietly he made his way through the compound to the main family's house. He started looking for what he believed to be either Hiyashi's study or office. As he was nearing he saw a lone guard with his Byakugan active. Looking at the tree he had originally landed in. He now realized that he should have activated everything before entering the compound. He would remember that in the future. After a brief search, he found the room he was looking for. Writing a simple note that he knew only Hiyashi would understand. Slipping it under the top paper he made his way back out of the clan's compound and headed home. Hiyashi entered his office, sat down, and let out a long breath. Going over the events of the meeting he had just been left in his head. Flashback. Hiyashi walked in and took his seat in the middle of the elders and called the meeting to order. After going through the standard clan business, they excused the branch members and got to the real reason that they called the meeting. Our final piece of business is the training of Hinata and Hanabi. We believe that the elder council should take over Hinata's training and have you, Hiyashi, focus on Hanabi. With the death of your wife you will have less time to train with both of them, and Hinata needs to be strong in order to be our next clan head. The leader of the elder council proclaimed. I don't see the need to do my job, as well, as train my own children. Before Hiyashi could continue he was interrupted. The question is not whether you can do both, but if you can do both properly. 
Hitomi helped you with minor clan matters and paperwork. It is not worth taking the risk that an oversight will be made by having a distracted clan head. Hiashi could see that there was something else behind this, but he couldn't think of a reason that would tip his hand. He didn't know who was responsible for his wife's death and wasn't ruling anyone out. Fine, but I will be observing the lessons whenever I choose, and I want weekly reports on her progress. It was the best he could do without outright refusing and creating possibly unneeded tension. For all he knew maybe they really did have pure intentions, but he doubted it. Then flashback. Coming out of his thoughts he looked at his desk and noticed that the paper on top was upside down. Lifting it he sees a note that was not there when he left. Hiashi. My father's head is half past the sunless noon. It took only a moment to realize who this was and what it meant. Naruto had been in his office and wanted to see him. Hokage Monument. Hiashi arrived at 12.30am on top of the head of the fort. When he got there, he saw nothing and no one. Activating his Byakugan also revealed nothing until he heard a voice right next to him. Beautiful, isn't it? Suddenly Naruto seemed to shimmer into existence next to him. How did you do that? Hiashi asked. It was quite disconcerting to see that a child of only 10 able to avoid his detection while standing right next to him, whilst he had his Byakugan activated. Another time. I wish to ask you what is going on with Hanabi. She has changed, and Hinata seems to be reverting back into her shy self. It is the council. They have been keeping me busy with more paperwork than before trying to make a point that they should train Hinata to take some strain off me. I also believe that they have gotten to Hanabi, and are trying to make her like them. I am still unsure to what ends they are trying to accomplish with both. Hiashi responded somewhat ashamed that he did not know what was happening within his own clan. I see. Is there anything I can do? Naruto asked. He hated to see what was happening to the girls. I see something big is coming. I am not sure when or what, but it can't be far off. Just be there for them. I fear I may need your help again to save my family soon. I have a final question for you. Hiashi hesitated. He really needed to know, but at the same time didn't want Naruto to take it the wrong way. What is it? Said Naruto with a lot of curiosity in his voice. He couldn't understand why he felt nervousness coming from Hiashi. Can that technique you used to save my wife, can it also remove the caged bird seal? Hiashi asked without looking at Naruto. I don't know. Why? Asked Naruto with a bit of an edge in his voice. Just hoping for a last option should get worse. And with that he left. Naruto also returned home trying to figure out what Hiashi meant with his last words. When Naruto got home he went to his room, sat on his bed, and began to meditate to enter his mindscape. He arrived in the forest right in front of the open gate where he found Kurama sleeping. That would explain why he didn't help me answer Hiashi Sama's last question. Though Naruto has started to push on Kurama's pot awaken. What are you doing in the middle of the night? Did you really forget about our meeting with Hiashi tonight? No, I just didn't see the point in me staying up for it. Naruto just looked at him, as a sweat drop rolled off the back of his head. Anyway, I need to ask you a question about my seal. Can my resurrection seals remove seals from other people? Naruto asked. Kurama cocked his head and thought for a few minutes. I don't see why not. There really isn't much that the purified life force energy won't fix. I would say it should. Kurama finished. Should I? You can't give me anything more than you should. Naruto asked, wondering how he didn't know. No. I have never heard of it being tried, as you are only the second human to ever have the ability, and plus if it didn't your shy Nomi will gain the ability to remove things like it, as soon as you learn how to control the Petra path you could simply absorb the seal. And it would be gone because it will not be able to bind to you with me here. Okay, that helps. I am going to sleep now. Naruto left his mindscape, and lay down on his bed, trying not to think about what the worst case scenario could be. Two months later the broken kunai bar. Enko had returned from another mission, and had decided she needed a drink. She kept being passed over for a promotion to Jonin from Special where she had been stuck for two years. She had been back in the village for four years, and she was still considered an outsider because of her sensei, even though he used her for an experiment, and left her for dead. The only reason she had gotten so special was because the Hokage gave her a field promotion after an A-rank mission that was supposed to be a B-rank mission. So here she was being underpaid, and overused. They sent her on missions that most would have considered suicidal. At least when the Hokage wasn't the one handing out missions that day. He treated her like she was any other loyal ninja, but no one else would really even look at her. Her only friends are Kurenai and Yuga Yuzuki, both of whom were currently out of the village on missions. She had many reasons to drink. Like the fact that Yuga was moving in with Hei, her boyfriend, and she wouldn't be able to afford the rent by herself. Kurenai already had a roommate, and it was another year before her lease was up, so she was stuck trying to find a place of her own. So here she was drowning herself in, as much sake as she could drink. She could see the guys leering at her, but she paid it no mind. They always did when all you wore was a mesh bodysuit, a brown trench coat, and an orange skirt. 
if she had been more observant or even a little sober, she would have noticed the look they were giving him was different than normal. It wasn't just a leer filled with lust, but also anticipation. She didn't notice that her last drink was a little more fizzy than normal. Getting up on wobbly legs she made her way out of the bar and started stumbling her way home. Making it only a couple of blocks before she collapsed. When she tried to move again she found that she didn't have the strength. With a little adrenaline flowing through her the fog in her mind cleared enough for her to realize she had been poisoned. That's when it came. Laughter. Well, well, well boys what do we have here? Asked the leader of the three. It looks like that snake whore drank a little too much. Should we help her? Asked the second one in a voice that was dripping with sarcasm. I believe we should. It wouldn't be right of us not to help a fellow shinobi. Said the final one of the group. The second went to pick her up, and when he did she noticed that they were all about two to three years older than her. She may have only been 17, but thanks to her bastard of an ex-sensei, she was one of the most skilled kanoichi in the village. But for all her skill she wouldn't be able to overcome three sober well in this state. Her mind began to race, as they picked her up, and headed in a direction that made her pale with fear. They dragged her to the shadiest part of town that was basically abandoned. Most of the buildings were falling apart, and it looked like a stiff wind could knock them over. No one would come by. No one would hear her as she was able to scream. She tried to use her chakra to cleanse the poison, but it seemed that they had accounted for that. She was totally at their mercy, and she knew what was going to happen. They dragged her into a rundown building that had been set up ahead of time. She could see this was well planned. Chakra ceiling cuffs. Straps, ropes, and chains all organized on a wall. It was so much worse. She figured they would kill her when they were done, but it seemed that they had planned on keeping her alive for at least a short while. After tying her down they cut her mesh bodysuit. Having dropped her coat on the way here it left her naked from the waist up, her breasts exposed. Well, have a look at that. The whore really has been hiding something, hasn't she? The leader of the little group sneered while grabbing her left breast and giving a rough squeeze before moving to the other one. Enko had tears in her eyes. This was her worst nightmare. This was worse than her worst nightmare. Nothing her sensei ever did to her could compare to this. And just when she was ready to give in, as they cut off her skirt and panties leaving her completely exposed there was a noise. The click of the door closing, alerting everyone that it was no longer just the four of them. The three men turned to look, but saw nothing. The one was somewhat of a censor, one of the reasons the leader brought him in on this. He would be able to keep watch without actually having to keep watch. He spoke now with a decent amount of fear in his voice. Remember how I said I thought we might have been followed. The other two just nodded. Well whatever that presence was that was behind us on the way here, is now in this room. I cannot tell where or what, but it's here. At that last admission, the other two started to freak out a little before calming down. Anko didn't know what to make of it. She was barely able to register what they were talking about, and she could sense nothing. The leader said it's probably nothing. You're just jumpy is all the leader said before turning back to Anko, only to notice a blonde haired boy now standing between them, and her, and that her coat was now covering her. With Naruto earlier. Naruto was sitting on his balcony enjoying the night trying to relax before going to bed while practicing his emotions and chakra sensing. Chakra sensing was something he had heard of but didn't really know how to do. He understood that everyone had the innate ability to feel chakra to a point. He was attempting to train this sense to see if he could go beyond that average ninja. So far, he has not been having any luck. He had figured that maybe he could use his abilities to sense emotions in conjunction with Chaka to give him a clearer picture on what was happening around him. In the middle of this mixing exercise if you will, he experienced another first. He could feel the emotions of four different people. Three had the same feeling to them. That weird one he got from adults when they looked at certain other adults, mixing in with what he had come to know, as excitement or anticipation, and finally just a hint of nervousness that seemed to be fading. Now while this was not the first time he had felt those three together, it was the first time he had experienced it from three people who were all men, and in a group. He had learned that men and women felt and projected the same emotions differently. The part that made him curious was that there was one woman with them, and he only felt fear. Not nervousness or anything of the sort, but just pure fear. Almost as bad as when Hinata was kidnapped. She had none of the other emotions that he usually associated with men giving of these emotions. That being the case he had decided to follow them. He activated his chakra masking seal and stuck to the shadows while moving towards the group. When he finally caught sight of them he could see three men and one woman, as he had thought. The weird thing was the woman was having to be carried by the two of the men with one arm over two of their shoulders, and a third following closely behind. Now he had seen people carried like this before, but it usually was because they were either drunk or hurt. He didn't see any injuries on her, but the large brown trench coat she had on could have hit it, but if that was the case the hospital was the other way. He could smell alcohol from one of them. He assumed it was the woman, but it also had another smell, one he didn't recognize. He followed closely, but never revealed himself. Until he figured out what was going on he would remain hidden. It was now Karama decided to speak to him. 
Kit, do you know what they are doing? Kurama had a pretty good idea, but he didn't want Naruto to know if he didn't have to. No. I am getting emotions from them that I have never seen together. Do you know? Naruto responded. Yes, but for now just follow them. If they plan to do what I believe then you will have to stop it. What is it? You're too young to learn that, but just know it is one of the things that makes him humans worse than any demon. With that Kurama went silent. Naruto contemplating what Kurama had said didn't ask further. He followed them to an abandoned and very rundown building. They went to an interior room that must have been an office of some kind, because the only way he could see in was through a window that made up a decent portion of the top of the door. He could hear them speaking to the woman, but wasn't able to see her. He was holding the brown trench coat she had been wearing that they had dropped about a block before the building. He just stayed outside the room watching trying to see if there was a reason he needed to step in. The three men parted for a second, and Naruto caught sight of the woman naked and crying. It was at this point that Kurama spoke again. Kit, I am sorry to make you do this, but you want to be a ninja, right? Naruto just gave a mental nod before Kurama continued, then I want you to go in there and kill those men. The tone he had used scared Naruto. He had never heard Kurama mad before, and it sort of scared him, even though the anger wasn't aimed at him. He was about to ask why when Kurama interrupted him, I won't tell you exactly what they are going to do if you continue standing here not moving, but you will never forgive yourself if you don't act soon. Now go. At this final prompting, Naruto activated his Kamu seal and entered the room as quietly as he could. When he shut the door it clicked and all three men turned to look at him. He quietly made his way around them and put the trench coat over to cover her. He then deactivated his Kamu and waited for them to turn around. Now, Enko's mind was racing. First her coat appeared out of nowhere and now a blonde haired boy suddenly appeared in between her and the men. The thing that confused her most was that there didn't seem to be any movement. No chakra usage, no shimmering like releasing a... He was just there instantly with his back to her. She didn't know why he was there, but she began to feel hope that maybe he would save her. She knew the idea was foolish. A child against three chunins in their twenties, but deep inside her was a spark of hope. When the three chunins finally came out of their shock the leader spoke up. Well if it isn't the little demon. And it seems he has come to protect the little snake whore. This night just keeps getting better. Not only do we get to rid the village of her, but we will be seen as heroes for finishing what the Yandame started. The other two were just grinning and nodding along feeling a little silly that they had been worrying. Discounting entirely the fact that they couldn't tell it was him following him and that he got around them without them so much as seeing a thing. Enko's eyes are shown with both hope and fear. She didn't know why this boy of all people would be the one to come for her and that scared her. But if rumors of his strength were true then she would be okay. She had heard that he had been able to stall an elite long enough for the Anbu to get there and finish the job. Naruto just stared ahead at them with no emotion whatsoever. He knew what he had to do, but this would still be his first real kill that he could have avoided if he wanted, even though Kurama said it would have haunted him, he still could have left. Any last words? Naruto asked, trying to hide the fear and apprehension in his voice. He was greeted with only laughter. Taking their amusement, as an opening Naruto drew a sword that neither Anko nor the Chunins had seen. In a flash, he had run the first one through the heart and started to swing at another, before the third managed to block with the kunai. The second was tending to the third trying to see if he could save his life, but it was all for naught. His heart was pierced clean through. The leader decided to go on the attack. Using a kunai to try and kill Naruto. Naruto was blocking with his sword looking for an opening when the second one joined the leader. Now Naruto could do nothing but dodge and flee. Waiting for an opening. After about two minutes of this Naruto saw his chance. Turning his back to the leader when he went for a downward slash, Naruto took a cut from his right shoulder to his left hip. It wasn't deep, but it hurt. He did this because the second had overextended on a stab attempt that Naruto dodged and was too off balance to defend. Naruto used this opportunity to stab him through the right side of his ribcage, taking out his right lung and heart in the process. The man died almost instantly. Damn you demon. The leader snarled. Trying to think of a distraction and being angry for ruining his plans. He didn't really care about his comrades. The boy was much faster than he thought. Maybe even faster than he was. He decided to try a shock tactic to try and stall thinking he would bleed out and get weaker. Before I kill you, would you like to know why everybody hates you? All this time Inko had been watching in amazement. When he got cut her heart dropped. She didn't know why, but seeing him hurt made her hurt as well. Maybe it was because he was risking his life for her and now it looked like he was going to lose. And him losing meant that they were both going to die, but she was going to be made to suffer much longer. The boy had killed two of the men that were going to rape her and was facing off with the last one. He was standing between her and the man who had been the leader. She could see the blood coming from his back, but she thought there should have been more. Upon closer inspection, she could see his hand glowing green as he was holding his shoulder. He had been healing himself in the middle of a fight. 
not knowing about his medical seal, she didn't even think that was possible let alone that someone that young knew medical. The cut had completely closed, and left no scar, only her white-eyed expression that the last took, as a sign that the boy was bleeding out. Tell me. Naruto growled playing along. He knew good and well, but he figured why not use this guy's own tactic against him. He had hidden his wound on purpose to make himself appear, as if he was weakening. Everybody believes that Yandane killed them, but that is a lie. He started before Anko tried to stop him. Speaking for the first time. Knew only to be silenced by Naruto quickly using the Anbu hand signs to tell her he already knew, and not to worry. To say she was surprised was an understatement. She only knew them because of her sensei. Anybody who was not an Anbu or retired Anbu, would normally be executed, as a matter of village security. He had learned them in the last few months of general shinobi knowledge he had absorbed from his parents. The leader continued. He couldn't kill it so he did the only thing he could. He sealed it into an orphan newborn. That orphan was you, he finished hoping Naruto would have a bit of a break that he could exploit. Naruto pretended to look confused, and looked down, shaking a little. Thinking he was crying, charged seeing his chance. He aimed his kunai for Naruto's heart. At the last moment, Naruto used his sword to deflect the kunai and, giving a slight twist of the pommel of his sword, revealing a short 7-inch blade coming from the handle of his sword, aimed it so the ran his throat straight into the blade, making it sever a jugular vein, his windpipe, and cutting half his spinal cord. He would be dead in a matter of moments. Naruto only said I already knew before he passed into blackness looking straight into the boy's eyes. Naruto let the man's body slump to the floor before twisting the pommel, and retracting the blade, and then sheathing his sword. He stood there for a moment before he collapsed to his hands and knees, and vomited the entire contents of his stomach while crying. Kurama was doing his best to comfort the young boy. This was something that he should never have had to experience this young. Anko just watched him. She was still tied up, and the drug didn't seem to be wearing off. All she could do was try to softly console him from 10 feet away in position bound to the bed. He had saved her, and she could tell the kills had been hard on his mind. Even though she had been 12 before she had been forced to kill. After about 15 minutes he got up, and made his way to her with a dead look in his eye, that showed the pain someone his age should never have to live with. Carefully used a kunai to cut her bonds, and free her. Sitting up, and holding her coat to cover her, she massaged her wrists to get feeling back in them, while he cut the ties to her ankles. He turned around so she could put the coat on, and close it. Then he spoke to her for the first time. Are you alright? He realized he didn't know her name. Enko, Enko Midarashi. She answered in a somewhat shy voice that was completely out of character for her. Are you alright Midarashi san? He asked while she just looked at him. No. Not right now, but I will be, someday. Enko replied in a sad tone of voice. Thank you for everything, she said, as she went to leave the room before Naruto noticed the mark on her shoulder. He had been absorbing the knowledge of his parents on seal too. And was able to recognize it, as a seal. He was about to ask her when he sensed Anbu on the way. Anbu will be here in a few minutes. This brought her up short. She didn't know how she would explain this. Sure, the Hokage would believe her, but that was only if they let it get that far. Many of the current Anbu hated her, and would surely use any reason to execute her on the spot. Considering who she was with she doubted that they would even stop to listen. She began to panic. I can barely move. Looks like these guys will get what they wanted after all. She mused out loud. What do you mean? Naruto asked in confusion, but she just told him there was no time to explain, and told him to run, as she tried to move faster. They had left the room, but had not made it out of the building before she collapsed unconscious. Pick her, and run. We can sort out the rest later. Not knowing what else to do Naruto went to pick her up, and was surprised at how light she felt. Kurama had, still unknown to him, released some of his gravity and resistance seals, so he could get them away. He used his camo and chakra masking seals once again until he got home. He laid her on his bed, and covered her with his blanket, as soon as he got home. Making sure she was comfortable before he went to make a few cups of ramen for dinner, then go to sleep. He had been trying to ask Kurama what he was going to do, but Kurama just said to get some sleep, and they would talk in the morning. Thanks for watching my video, leave a like, if you enjoyed my video, and also do consider subscribing.